Hi everybody, tonight we're going to talk about measuring inflation, so it'll be a nice follow-on from yesterday's, or rather today's discussion uh, regarding what inflation is. So we're going to talk about three things tonight. We're going to talk about market baskets and price indices. We're going to talk about the consumer price index. We're also going to talk about other price measures. Let's get right into it. So market baskets and price indices. When economists measure the changes changes in price and the rate of changes in prices they use something called market baskets so let's take an example here um, because prices are changing in 2008 to 2009 some prices are rising some are falling but we still don't know whether we were seeing overall inflation well we need to determine whether the market basket so that basket of goods and services became more or less expensive to purchase in order to do that in an example we're going to use an economy that only has four products in their market basket. Salami, corned beef, bologna, and cheese. We're going to put together what's called the deli price index. Here's what we do. We take our 2008 costs and we take compare them to our 2009 costs. So you can see 2008, 300 pounds at $4, 200 pounds at $5, and so on. Comparing them to 2009, 300 at 6, 200 at 7, 100 at 150. What we do then is figure out the total cost, which you see here, 39 and 46. We then look at the change. So the 2009 cost over 2008 costs, we see that actually we have a change of 1.179. And this ratio shows us that the deli bundle of goods and services we talked about increased in overall, by, overall price by about 18%, so 17.9% from 2008 to 2009 even though some prices actually fell. That's a very important point. Remember when we're measuring the, the rate of changes in inflation, we're looking at an entire market basket of goods. Some of the prices will go up and other prices will go down. Now, let's talk a little more in depth about calculating indices. How do we do that? So if we were going to track the, pri the prices over time, the prices that we just looked at, we would need to build an ongoing, what we call Delhi Price Index, or DPI for our example. Generally speaking, the price index is computed by constructing a ratio. So here's how we do it. The formula is the price index in, the, in year T, whatever that base year is, equals 100 times cost of the market basket in year T over cost of the market basket in the base year. So let's take a look at that again and see how we're going to calculate it using the base year as the benchmark year for us. In the daily example, and I'm just going through in a little more depth what we just did on the prior page, use 2008 as the base year, so you get your DPI for 2008, and because you're using 2008 as the base year, look at that, your index becomes 100. The, the daily price index for 2009 is 100 times 4,600, which was the 2009 price number over the 2008 price number 100 times gives you an index you can see here like the prior page that was 1.179 this is 117.9 which gives you an index so <clears throat> calculating the inflation rate then is just calculating the percentage change between any two values in the index so we have here 100 and 117.9 if we want to look at the inflation rate what are we doing we're comparing those two the change from here to here, 17.9, which gives us an inflation rate of 17.9%. Let's talk about some other commonly used indices. Well, first of all, the, the most important that's used is the consumer price index. You'll hear it referred to as the CPI. It's the most widely used measure of price inflation. Surprisingly, they actually computed every day. Who are they? They are the, are the uh, Department of Commerce and working in conjunction with, and I should know this and I don't, um, I'll find out by tomorrow who, who the other folks are who compute the CPI. It's computed every month and uses prices for a market basket of 80,000 goods and services that a typical urban family of four consumes. Now, do you actually consume 80,000 goods and services over the course of a month? You actually do. When you think about all of the different things that you that, that you come in contact, touch, consume, use, use up, expend over the course of a month, you and the other people in your family. The producer price index is actually a typical baskets of goods and services that contains raw commodities such as steel, electricity, coal, and so on, 
purchased by producers rather than by consumers. So think raw commodities, so steel, electricity, coal, and so on, things used for producers to produce the goods that we end up consuming. The GPI deflator is another uh, indis, index. We're not going to get into the definition of that index in any detail because technically it's not a price index. It's used in the same way. What I want you to understand is it belongs in this group. And if you look at this graph that's straight out of the book, look at how tight the correlation is between these three indices over time. Going back to 1930, the percent change in these three indices, it's very, very close. So all three are pretty good measures. You have some years where the PPI is different than the CPI. But the GDP deflator is pretty darn tight against the PPI and the CPI. Okay, key concepts for this module. First, remember that inflation is a very broad measure of how fast overall prices in the economy are rising. Remember, it's less about the fact that they are changing and it's more about how fast they're changing. Um, remember, some goods may fall, yet overall the economy is experiencing inflation. We saw that on our daily price index. Second, creation of a price index does give us the ability to track changes in the overall price of that market basket of items. Remember the price index calculation. I won't read it out. You can pause. Remember, consumer inflation is the rate of increase in the consumer price index, that market basket of 80,000 goods. And then last, inflation this year. Again, I won't read through the whole formula. You can pause that. Make sure you understand it. Uh, and we will look forward to talking about it tomorrow. That's it. Have a great night. And I will see you in the morning.